Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we are going to understand carbon cycle. Let's start with introduction. Elements which are essential components of the protoplasm undergo cyclic alterations between an inorganic state, free in nature, and a combined state in free organisms. This repeated transformation of elements from living protoplasm to free state in the nature constitutes of the cycle elements. When plants and other so soil organisms die. their organic constituents are mineralized by the microorganisms now we know that earth is essentially a closed system with respect to matter we can say that all matter on the earth cycles every matter that is used by living organisms possesses between the biotic and abiotic components of the biosphere nutrient cycling is the movement of matter through the system In general we can subdivide the system into atmosphere hydrosphere lithosphere and biosphere on the basis of that the microorganisms or any uh, live organism on the earth requires their nutrients in the simpler form so that's what there are different types of processes are going on in the soil or in the organic matter that is utilized by the organisms next that is mineralization of organic carbon nitrogen sulfur phosphorus by soil microorganisms make these elements available for use when these elements are incorporated into the protoplasm there is usually a change in their oxidation state now we know that whatever compounds or whatever nutrients are available in the nature that are in the form of complex that we say are complex form of orga uh, like organic compounds and that complex form of compounds can't be eaten or the uh, like animals or the live organisms because they are in complex nature that's what these complex type of compounds first have to convert into the simpler form and then and then the live organisms or the uh, microorganisms can eat them in very good manner and they can do their metabolism that's what there is a first need that we have to do the chemical changes in their body that is chemical body the elements are generally found in reduced state in the protoplasm however when mineralized they are in an oxidized state the elements therefore serve three functions that is the as essential constituents of protoplasm as source of energy oxidation and as electron acceptors in the oxidation reaction so these are the three of uh, three steps where we can easily identify the elements now why there is a need of carbon cycle or why carbon is so important let's see now carbon is a common element found in living tissue it is also form forms a carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere now it is a most abundant element on the earth why because 90% of all compounds on the earth have carbon carbon dioxide is an important component of the atmosphere why it is an important component because it is required for the photosynthesis and it is given off by the plants and animals during respiration and that's what there is a need to reduce the carbon dioxide from the earth because because it is like co2 is ultimately helping for the climate change now this is cycle known as carbon cycle now see first we are going to uh, see the cycle in short then we are going to describe the cycle in detail now see here this is the co2 in atmosphere and dissolve in water this co2 is first taken by the green plants by the process known as photosynthesis now during photosynthesis they do respiration metabolism and during respiration and metabolism co2 is revealed or removed and that co2 comes in atmosphere at the same time the green plants are used in the fuel and during the fuel combustion co2 is again produced in the atmosphere now these uh, these animals and the other the other type other types of uh, animals will eat the green plants and during that respiration metabolism again co2 is released in the atmosphere now when the death of green plants and animals occur there is a decay or there is a decomposition now during the decomposition co2 is again removed or released in the atmosphere so this is known as carbon cycle now this see most important part is the photosynthesis now photosynthesis and the respiration are two opposing processes that drive the global carbon cycle it is predominantly a gaseous cycle with co2 as the main vehicle of flux between the atmosphere hydrosphere and biota terrestrial plants are atmospheric co2 as their carbon source for photosynthesis whereas aquatic plants use dissolved carbonates 
In addition, carbon finds its way into island waters and oceans as bicarbonate, resulting from the weathering of calcium-rich rocks such as limestone and chalk. Respiration by plants, animals, and microorganisms releases the carbon locked in photosynthetic products back to the atmospheric and hydrospheric carbon compartments. Now, see results of increased levels of CO2. First point is the due to increased levels of CO2, increased atmospheric and sea surface temperature, ice caps and glaciers melt, flooding of coastal areas due to the sea level rise. Droughts in some locations or increased productivity in others. Decreasing salinity of ocean water changes ocean circulation, ocean acidification, reef organisms dissolve and increase insect bond and last one economic losses. So that's what there is a need to decrease the CO2 from the atmosphere. Thanks a lot.